Hello, my name is Jenna Nichols. Uh, today we'll be talking about structure 1.3.2, which has to do with the line emission spectrum of hydrogen. Okay, so just to review from last you, uh, section, if you trap a gas in a tube and you pass electricity through that tube, the um, gas will emit light. And if you were to take that light and then pass it through a prism, the prism will split the light into the different wavelengths. And for elemental gases that you're doing this to, you'll wind up with uh, what's called a line spectra um, because you'll get these discrete lines instead of a continuous spectrum. Like if you pass white light through the prism, you'll get all of these different wavelengths. Um, but the light emitted from an element will have these discrete lines based on their energy levels. And we're going to look at hydrogen today and how this discovery um, kind of progressed our understanding of the atomic model. Okay, so let's look at the Bohr model of hydrogen. Hydrogen has one proton and one electron. Um, so in the lowest energy configuration, the proton is of course in the nucleus and the electron will be at the um, first energy level closest to the nucleus. Um, we use the uh, letter N called the principal quantum number uh, to denote the energy level. So that's the principal quantum number. So when I say this is in the first energy level, that's N equals one. So then uh, the, there's other energy levels as well. And as you get further and further away from the nucleus, you get higher and higher for your energy levels. N equals two, N equals three, N equals four, et cetera. Um, the electron in hydrogen can actually move between those energy levels. If the electron gains energy, it can move to a higher energy level. And once it, once it is in that higher energy level, it can release energy to move back down to a lower energy level. So the closest to the nucleus is the lower, lowest energy and furthest away from the nucleus is the most energy. And uh, the lowest energy configuration, we call that the ground state. And anything that's higher than that would be called the excited state. So let's look at that Bohr model again. Let's say I've got our one proton in the nucleus and let's draw four energy levels for hydrogen. Um, and if it's in the ground state, it's going to have its one electron in that first energy level. Okay, let's talk about the two um, vocab words here, quanta versus photons. Quanta is like the amount of energy that it would take for that electron to move from one energy level to another energy level. Um, the photon is a discrete amount of light energy. And so effectively, if an atom like hydrogen absorbs a photon with a particular amount of energy, a quanta of energy, it can move between the energy levels. So a higher energy photon will get it to jump more energy levels. A lower energy photon might only get it to a couple energy levels. So again, absorbing those photons will cause it to move between energy levels as long as it has enough energy. And the more energy, the more energy levels it can move. Now the same is true in reverse. If you're starting at a high energy level and you're moving down, it's going to release photons. Uh, the more energy levels it falls, the greater the energy of those photons. Um, and so we're going to then relate those, the difference in energy in the energy levels of hydrogen um, to the atomic emission spectra um, based off of the photons that can be emitted. So let's talk really briefly about the convergence limit. Um, so let's say this is our first energy level. The next one would be here, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, and they keep getting closer together. Uh, 
like that. Um, so this is the difference in energy like this. Um, so essentially, if you get high enough, they're going to uh, converge uh, for the amount of energy of that particular energy level. And um, you do need to know that there is a greater difference in energy when you get closer to the nucleus compared to further away from the nucleus. Now there is something called the Rydberg equation. And um, that's specifically for hydrogen, energy levels in hydrogen. Um, so that is the energy of a particular level is equal to the Rydberg constant for hydrogen. And then one over n squared. Now you don't you don't have to know the equation and you don't really need to be able to use the equation, but um, we should kind of understand that um, the difference between two levels is going to be larger when the energy levels are small because of this inverse relationship. And when the energy levels get very large, um, this fraction will get significantly smaller, um, which is where you get the concept of a convergence limit um, because the, the denominator here is going to get much, much larger, so the um, fraction will get much, much smaller uh, over time. Okay, so here's the actual atomic emission spectra of hydrogen. hydrogen. Um, so this is where if you take hydrogen in a tube and you pass electricity through it, it will emit light. You pass that light through a prism, it's going to look like this every time, as long as it's pure hydrogen. Um, and the reason for that has to do with those energy levels. So let me draw this really quick so we can look at this again. N equals 1, N equals 2. Remember, they keep getting closer together. N equals 4. Now that one almost looks the same. Let's make it a little closer so you can see it. There we go. Um, so there's our six energy levels there. Now, if you um, have that one electron in hydrogen, just one, it's going to um, change energy levels when the electricity passes through the gas. Now, if you have an electron, maybe it's in the third energy level. Once it has the extra energy, if it jumps down to the first energy level, that will emit UV radiation, so not visible light. Uh, and really anything jumping down, back down to the first energy level is going to have a lot of energy being released, so it will be of that high energy photons in the UV range. Okay, so that would be for energy levels back down to the first energy level. And you don't need to know the name of those series, although they do have particular names. Where you get these four colors in the visible range are when the electrons fall back down to the second energy level. So if you're, you have an electron that's going from the third energy down to the second energy level, that's going to emit red light. Um, if you're going from the fourth energy level back down to the second one, that will emit this light blue here. From the fifth energy level down to the second, that will emit the uh, kind of indigo color here. And if you're going from the sixth energy level back down to the second one, that will emit that violet light. Um, so for those four transitions, you're going to wind up with four lines on the hydrogen emission spectrum. And so we can very clearly say like this red one is from three down to two, from four down to two, from five to down to two, and from six down to two. And you can see how the lines are actually getting closer together. That's because the difference in energy is smaller um, as you get to higher and higher energy levels. Uh, now, finally, if you were to have an electron, like say in the fourth energy level or the fifth energy level going down to the third, that is much less energy that would emit photons in the IR range instead. So the transitions to the first energy level emits UV radiation, which we can't see. 
much higher energy because there's more, um, there's a greater difference in the energy levels. Um, transitions down to the second energy level, release visible light in those four distinct colors. And energy um, transitions down to the third energy level um, will release infrared light, which is lower energy than the visible. Um, and so that's where we get the hydrogen emission spectrum. Now, um, scientists back in the day essentially took this information from the spectra and worked backwards to figure out that the electrons are moving in this way. And that's you know how they figured out the Bohr model. And um, really interesting stuff how the atomic model developed based on this very simple information. So let's look at a couple examples. Uh, the first five energy levels in a hydrogen atom, which electronic transition would release a photon with the highest energy. Highest energy is going to be from the fifth energy level, because that's the highest energy all the way down to the first energy level. And of course, we use uh, these are n numbers, n equals 5, n equals 1. Um, that's the largest gap. Uh, so we'll release a photon with the highest energy. Okay, so now the um, this question, first five energy levels, which one would release a photon with the longest wavelength? Um, longest wavelength means the lowest energy. And um, because of that convergence limit, the one with the smallest gap is going to be starting again at the fifth energy level and going down to the fourth energy level. Um, so just one level difference. And the difference between the higher levels is smaller than the difference between the lower levels. Okay, so linking questions, they link to other sections. Um, and we've talked about this a little bit. Uh, emission spectra from gaseous elements and of light. What qualitative and quantitative data can be collected from instruments such as gas discharge tubes and prisms? That was the, um, if the gas is trapped in the tube, you pass electricity through it, it will emit light. And that light has a distinct color to it um, that we can use to determine the element, but we can also get more specific and pass that light through a prism and separate it into distinct wavelengths. And each element will have its own distinct pattern. Um, so we can figure out um, qualitatively uh, which element is contained, if it's a single element. Um, we can also measure the specific wavelengths of light uh, quantitatively to figure out um, what electronic transitions are happening um, in that particular discharge tube. Um, and then our other linking question for this one is, uh, how do emission spectra provide evidence for the existence of different elements? Um, it's because they have different patterns of light being emitted. So the helium atomic emission spectra looks a lot different from the hydrogen atomic emission spectra. Um, it looks very different from the neon atomic emission spectra. So um, even just qualitatively, you can tell that there are different um, something's different about the substances trapped in those different spectral tubes uh, and the amount of light that's emitted or the pattern of light that's diff uh, emitted differently indicates that there's a different um, configuration of electrons within the atom.